Thanks, guys. Happy Friday. Welcome into the show. I'm Lena Washington. He's Kevin John. Typically, we start every Friday night with some high school football, but it's a big night, not like any other Friday. That is right, Lena. Tonight was opening night for the Kings, celebrating 35 years of basketball here in the capital city, but they would be taking the court tonight without Marvin Bagley, who will be out four to six weeks with a fractured thumb. Yeah, but it was still a festive night out at Golden One Center. It may be 35 years for Kings basketball in the capital city, but we're opening the fourth NBA season inside Golden One Center in downtown Sacramento. The Kings honoring many legends in the house tonight, including Chris Weber sitting courtside with team owner Vivek Ranadive. Kings looking to rid themselves of that nasty taste left in their mouth, courtesy of the Suns in their season opener in Phoenix a couple days ago tonight, having to put up with Damian Lillard and his Portland Trailblazers. De'Aaron Fox had a much better game than we saw the other night, feeding off the home crowd as he led the Kings in scoring with 28 points. The Kings and the Blazers trading leads for much of the first half, tied at the halftime break when Grammy-nominated rapper Wale performed on the court, even creating a song that the team used in its pregame intros. And during the second half, sour again for Sacramento. The Blazers take a 10-point lead into the fourth, and then it was Dame time. Lillard went off, dropping 13 of his 20, uh, 35 points in the fourth quarter, spoiling the home opener in Sacramento. The Kings fall 122-112, to falling 0-2 to start the season. Now the Utah Jazz awaiting them tomorrow night in Salt Lake. The Kings dropping their home opener still 0-4 and in home openers at Golden 1 Center. And again, they're traveling to Utah tomorrow. I mean, Dane's a great player. Uh, that's, always a, that's always a guy that you know, I enjoy going up against. He makes tough shots. I just try to make it tough on him. Uh, just try to come back on the other, other end uh, in attack mode. But I mean, that's a great, that's a great player. That's a great guy. It's, it's always fun being able to play against him. You know, you just get a, you just get a one and more, man. Defense is all about heart and uh, playing hard. Uh, guys get a one and more. Coverage, communication, all that. You know, that's that goes a long way in this league. And uh, if you want to be a good team, you gotta be, out of, you gotta be our best. Doing that, communicating, rebounding, making an extra pass, all that stuff, man. But these are things that we see, that we are addressing, that we know we need to fix. And as we fix them, we will become a better basketball team. All right, now we turn our attention to Friday Night Football. We're in week nine, which means the regular season is coming up next week. Yeah, it went by so quickly. Our ABC 10 Game of the Week taking us down to Modesto for a major matchup between Grace Davis and Johansson. And they made us work for our highlights tonight in our Game of the Week. Scoreless in the first half on senior night for the Vikings. We pick it up in the second half. We see Davis quarterback Elijah Diaz handing it off to Gregory Smith, who does the rest. 45-yard touchdown for the first points of the game, but the home team coming up with an answer late in this one. Johansson quarterback John Romero, you'll see more from him in a little bit. He'll hit Abel Lugo, who it goes up the gut for the first touchdown of the game for the Vikings. Number six, putting six on the board for the home team. Johansson scores again. Romero connecting with Tiernan Collins this time, a 30-yard touchdown strike, a two-point conversion, ties this game up at 14. But the Vikings end up pulling away in dramatic fashion in this one, finding the end zone one more time before this game is over. And the Johansson Vikings win it 21-14, putting on for Modesto in our ABC 10 Game of the Week. I think we just we started talking around the sideline because we had plays like that earlier on in the game. And we really we came together, coaches and players, and we figured out what we were going to do to make, make us get together to make that big score at the end. Yeah, we started off a little sluggish, but man, these kids are all heart, you know. Um, I had 25 seniors on senior night, 23 of them are four-year seniors, and they decided to stick it out when the times here at Johansson weren't the, uh, the brightest. You know, we've had some tough season, and my hat's off to my kids. I mean, they just, uh, character, character all the way. And in Elk Grove tonight, we had a great battle between rival programs, the Thundering Herd hosting the Consumness Oaks Wolfpack. Packed house on hand in Elk Grove, student section, straight lit. The first half was pretty much an offensive battle. We'll pick things up in the first quarter. Elk Grove quarterback Carter Harris calls his own number. He picks up a nice sizable game. This drive would end with a field goal by Aiden Gardner. Thundering Herd take an early 3-0 lead to the second quarter. Kasumnis Oaks ball, Anthony Grisby Jr. looking for his man, but he's picked off right there by Kate Jordan. Jordan's gonna return this inside the 20, but that drive would lead to nothing. So later in the second quarter, Grisby Jr. going deep to the end zone, but he's intercepted again, this time by Nick Woolston. He doesn't even mess up his beautiful hair. Kasumnis Oaks would throw 5-0 at the half, but the Wolfpack would turn it on in the third quarter. They end up defeating Elk Grove 23-12. Kasumnis Oaks moves to 7-2 on the year. 
Now to Natomas, the undefeated Intercom Tigers hosting the Yuba City Honkers. Second play from scrimmage, a pick six from Aaron Esparo. He'll run it back for the first Tiger touchdown of the game. It was senior night, so you know some added motivation for the Tigers in this one after taking a 7-0 lead. It's number seven for Intercom finding his way into the end zone. Dino Watson with a beautiful catch to make it 14-0 Intercom. But the Honkers would not go away quietly in the first half. Check this run out by Takashi Falpula. A grown man run put Yuba City on the board before the first half was over. And then an added 57-yard field goal cutting the lead to four. The Tigers had a 21-17 lead at halftime this game going down to the final minutes, but the Intercom Tigers remain undefeated. They defeat Yuba City by a final of 35 to 20, improving to 9 and 0 on the season. Now to Manteca, the Buffaloes hosting the Sierra Timberwolves. Both teams coming in at 6 and 2. Manteca getting going early. Jacob De Jesus will take the handoff and he's going to dodge a few defenders and get into the end zone for Six, the Buffaloes take uh, an early 7-0 lead after that touchdown. The extra point is good. Sierra answers right back. Kamani Stanley taking the handoff. Look at the speed on this kid. Racing down the sideline. And he outruns the entire defense for the score. Sierra misses the extra point. They still trail 7-6. So to the second quarter we go. Manteca ball on the two-yard line. Angel Gary plunging in for the score. And Manteca led 22-6 at half. The Buffaloes go on to blow out Sierra by a final 42-12. Manteca moving to 7-2 and two on the year. And remember, you can find all of our high school football coverage in one place. We have a special playlist on the ABC10 YouTube channel with extended highlights you won't find anywhere else. And when we come back, we're checking in with Johnny Football out in Modesto for our fan game of the week. But first, the Elk Grove cheerleaders taking us to the break. We're the Elk Grove cheerleaders and you're watching Friday Night Football. All right, thank you, ladies. And now it's time for your favorite portion of the show, our fan game of the week. Yeah, more than 6,000 of you voted and sent our own John Bartell out to Gregory High School. So take it away, Johnny Football. All right, Johnny Football here out in Modesto. And today we're at Gregory High, and today we are tackling cancer. Let's go to those highlights. It's the pink out game, tackling breast cancer, and everyone here is participating by wearing their pink. The game is Jaguars versus Turlock Bulldogs, and listen to that DJ. Everyone in the crowd is thumping, thumping. Action takes place at the end of the first quarter. It's a passing game tonight. Bulldogs with the long bomb. It's short a few yards, but Turlock will pick up the touchdown the next play, and that motivates Jaguars to start this little dance off here. Hey, not bad. Is this a club or a football game? And hey, that dance off seemed to help. Jaguars quarterback Baker Melendez doing a little dance of his own into the end zone. My boy Trevor, though, he describes it way better than I can. Oh, there's a guy right there. Oh, oh, dives in, and it's a touchdown. Oh. Okay, if one quarterback keeper wasn't enough, here you go. Baker Melendez does it again the second quarter. Watch out for those wild arms. We've always had a good spirit, win, lose, or tie, blue and gold till we die. Yeah, spirit is definitely strong in Modesto, but Bulldogs will get the final play. That is a touchdown. Turlock wins 25-13. Hey, right, that's all from Gregory. I'm Johnny Football. Let's go back to the Johnny Football bringing us the goods all season in our fan game. You can check out his complete coverage on the sports page at abc10.com. We'll be back with more high school football after this. Welcome back in Laguna Creek on the road visiting Monterey Trail and this one was all Mustangs, just pure domination. We'll pick these up in the third quarter, Monterey Trail ball, Caleb Ramser takes the handoff. He's going to dance his way down the field to Luda, few defenders, finally gets taken down inside the 20. Same drive, look at this run right here by Chris Lands. right when you thought he was down, he emerges from the group, walks in for the touchdown, Mustangs up 27-7 at this point and it would get worse. Later in the quarter, Otha Williams takes the handoff and look at this kid run like Forrest Gump. 81 yards to the house. Monterey Trail goes on to spank Laguna Creek. 41 to seven, Mustangs move to eight and one on the season. And remember, for extended highlights and post-game reaction from tonight's Kings game, be sure to head on over to ABC 10, our YouTube channel, click subscribe,
And uh, all that other good stuff. Yeah, follow along with us. That's all the time we have for you tonight. We will see you back here for Week 10, the regular season finale of Friday Night Football here on ABC 10. Have a good weekend.